coming of your Son, we ask that you would fill us with your Spirit just as you filled Mary in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2010, I, I got a call to Summer Memorial Lutheran Church in Newberry. And as typical, when you started a new church, you go there the first day and you see the new computer and all of the other file, files and things like that that are left over. But on the desk, there was a piece of equipment that looked a little odd. I picked it up, and it was about this big, and it was a cell phone like I hadn't seen in about a decade. Turns out it was the church's cell phone that the pastor would carry around. And so I went to the council, I was like, do I really need to carry two phones with me? And they said, no, so long as, you know, it's okay for people to call you on your personal cell phone. Well, since we didn't pay by the minute in 2010 anymore, I thought, hey, no problem. But they said, one other condition, um, you have to change your number to a Newberry number because some of our folks don't have long distance. I didn't even know that was an option, um, you know, that you could choose not to have long distance on your phone. But I guess back in 2010, people still paid for long distance, and, you know, some people chose not to at all. So I changed my number to Newberry. Well, in 2016, I was called here. And so I chose, maybe, I don't know, worried that some of you didn't have long distance, or maybe I just wanted it to be home. I chose my, I changed my number back to a Lexington number. And I really didn't think much about it. Um, and because I also figured that, you know, when you stop a number, you would think that it would go into like the bottom of the pool and wait a little bit before they start handing your phone number out to other people. No such luck to the poor guy that got my number. And, and so one evening, this gentleman was sitting with a friend. The gentleman's name, some of you may know him, is Dr. Hamilton Peters. And he was sitting with a person many of you may know named Tracy Bishop. Well, Hamilton's phone rang, and being the neurologist that he is, he has to answer his phone, says hello. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. Oh, it's no problem. No, really, it's fine. It's, it's okay. No, I, I think I just have his number. And he hangs up the phone and says to Tracy, you know, I don't know whose number this is, but people must really like him. They keep on calling him, and they are so nice. And Tracy says, I think that's my pastor. Thankfully, Hamilton was very nice to the people calling. In fact, one of the people who called is sitting in this room right now, not knowing that I had changed my number. But the reality is, people don't always react that way to wrong numbers. Now, do they? I mean, let's be honest. When somebody calls you the wrong number, there, there's a few ways that you can react. Sometimes it's pretty annoying, and you, would, and you act that way, right? Of course, nobody here would do that, I'm sure. <laughs> You good children of God that you are. But sometimes we don't react well. Sometimes we're, we're, you know, very polite. Oh, it's a wrong number. No problem. That's just fine. Sometimes we like to have a little fun. Oh, yeah. No, she's in the next room. Let me go get her. You know, or sometimes we just pretend to be that person. And then sometimes we just hang up. There's all kinds of different ways to respond. But see, nowadays, it's not just wrong numbers on telephone calls. It's also texting wrong numbers. And there's been some experiences where the response changed lives. So back in 2009, um, Brenda Rivera texted a new friend a Bible verse. And the friend said, thanks, who is this? It's Brenda. We met the other night. Uh, I didn't meet any Brenda the other night, but thank you, I can tell by your, by your text that you are a person of God. And they started going back and forth, and his name was Isaiah Stearns. And, and Isaiah kept saying, well, you know, that's great, trying to carry on the conversation. And Brenda thought this was a little creepy, as she should have, because any time, you know, some guy, random guy's like, oh, that's great. Well... He eventually wore her down to the point that her mother stalked the guy and went to meet him. And said, and so Brenda was like, what's he like? Well, out of 1 to 10, I give him an 11. You're going to marry this guy. And sure enough, they did. 
Um, and now they have six children. Then there was another wrong, wrong number, and I brought a cheat sheet for names. Wanda Dench texted who she thought was her grandson, said, I, I can't wait to see you at Thanksgiving, um, love grandma. He said, Jamal Hinton responded with, thanks, but you're not my grandma. Can I still get a plate, though? And this African-American young man texted a selfie of himself to this lily white woman to, to prove that it wasn't her grandma. But you know what? For the last eight years, they have spent every Thanksgiving together. See how much that response changed things. So here's another story I heard on my way here this morning. In 1955, Sears Roebuck put out an ad in the Colorado area that, that gave a number to call Santa Claus. How awesome is that, right? And the only thing about it is they put the wrong number in the ad. And the number they put was to the um, Continental Air Defense Command System. And so this young child calls up the Continental Air Defense System in Colorado and gets Colonel Harry Shoup, who pretended to be Santa Claus. And now the North America Aerospace Defense Command, which was once the other company, or we may know them as NORAD, continues to track Santa Claus to this day. All because of how Colonel Harry Shute chose to respond to the young child who called the wrong number. The response makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Think about the way that we respond to the things in our life. Whether good or bad, uh, whether it's a wrong number or just a bad day, whether it's somebody who cuts us off in traffic or, or somebody who holds the door open for us, we have all kinds of opportunities to respond in many and various ways. And that includes the way we respond to God. In this morning's gospel reading, we heard the familiar story of an angel appearing to Mary. Now again, as I told the children, Mary was about 13 years old. Which, by the way, the reason we know that, which one of the kids asked, was because that was, the, that was basically the age that women got engaged in that, in that day. I know it sounds weird and really creepy these days, but that's the way it was done 2,000 years ago. And so, this angel says, you are going to conceive and bear a child, and it's going to be the, the son of the Most High. To which Mary says, huh? How can this be, since I'm a virgin? I mean, she probably didn't know much at 13, but she did know enough to know that Babies don't, don't just come from nowhere. nowhere. And so the angel says that God will overcome her and, and he, it will be the son of God. Now, realize this is going to completely turn Mary's life upside down. Never mind the fact that she was going to be a bearing a child, but the fact that she was engaged to another guy who, by the way, was not God meant that this was going to be a little bit of a problem. And, and never mind the impossibility of it all, but everything would change from that moment on. I mean, can you imagine how scary that would have been? I mean, first off, an angel showing up in your room at night, that would be pretty frightening. Maybe you're okay with that. I would be freaked out of my mind and wondering why the alarm didn't go off, you know? But here she is, 13, and God says, you are going to give birth to the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And her response, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Wow. You see, Mary is special. We know Mary is special. But Mary's not just special because she, she bore Jesus. She's special because of the way she responded. 
Her response made all the difference. You know, I wonder what would have happened if Mary had just been like, yeah, not me. Mm -mm. You need to go on. I must have had some bad, you know, liver or something because this is a nightmare and it's not going to happen. No, Mary said, here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So my friends, as I told the children, God is calling all of us. God is calling each and every one of you. It begins at baptism when we were called to this font, but it continues throughout our life. And, and, and sometimes those calls are, are small, and sometimes they are life-altering. But know this, God is calling you all to something this and every day. And your response makes all the difference. And, and so the first thing we have to do in this process is figure out, well, what does that call look like? Because the reality is, again, most of us are not going to have an angel show up to us and tell us what God's going to do in our lives. It would be helpful, let's be honest. Wouldn't it be great if there was like, when we say we want a sign, a literal sign showed up and said, do this. But even then, would we be okay with that? If an angel did show up in our living room, would we, would we be all right with saying and just say, sure, Jesus, I'm, I'm in. I'll let my life be turned completely upside down. But discerning what that call is, is the beginning. Am I being called? Sometimes that call comes through the voice of a friend or a family member. Just sometimes it's this still small voice in, in the back of your head. Sometimes it's a loud voice from God. Sometimes you... you Feel it in a TV show, sometimes you see it on commercial. There's all kinds of different ways that God can call us. We just have to be attentive to that call. And then we have to question it. Now, I know you're like, question the call from God? Yes, Mary did. Mary said, how can this be? You know, it's not just, you don't just jump right in. You, you sort of take stock. And see, here's another thing that people didn't quite realize in this, because we only heard part of the text. Mary got proof. Because the angel says, and here's proof. Your, your cousin Elizabeth is six months pregnant. And what we didn't hear in this text, what comes very next, is that as soon as Mary woke up, she went to see Elizabeth. She wanted to see for herself. Was this a bad dream? And then when she saw Elizabeth, that's when she knew. She knew that it wasn't a, a bad dream. It was an angel of the Lord telling her. And so it's good for us, too, to, to sort of ask questions. Ask your friends and family. Ask other people. And I promise you, if the Holy Spirit is coming to you, the Holy Spirit is going to come to them, too. And give them an answer. And it may feel strange. It may be uncomfortable. It may be completely wild and, and, and seemingly impossible. But as you discern God's call, you will have it confirmed in many ways exactly what God's calling you to do. But then you have a choice. You have a choice whether you're going to say, ah, that's a wrong number. Or whether or not you're going to say, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. My friends, you have been called. You have been called in many and various ways to, to many special things. How are you going to respond? Amen.